Hey everybody, it's Christina of Crafty Paws. I'm here to share with you guys another card that I made for our medical heroes. This one is of a Dr. Digi stamp from Birdie Brown from MFT Stamps. This one I believe is called Bedside Manor. And I downloaded him, then took a screenshot of him so that I could create a JPEG where I deleted the nose and mouth and so I could doodle on a mask. And I colored him up with a little bit of a darker complexion. He kind of reminds me of my brother-in-law who's a doctor and um, I love the way he came out. So this is where I am doodling on the mask and I'm just trying to do it so that it matches the kind of angle of his face. So it's off a little bit toward receding in the backside and on the right side it's just, you know, pretty direct. And I'm giving him some darker color tones. This skin color combination is actually a set that's available on Amazon for a really good price. I'm going to put a link in the description box below to this skin tone set. It even includes the R20 for the blush. And now I'm showing you guys, I laid down an E00 and then I am putting in the darkest color, the E13 all around the edges, kind of where the shadows would be. Then I'm blending in an E11 so that I can try and connect the E13 to the E00, blending in further away from the edges. And then I add a little bit of the R20 for the cheeks. And then to blend the rosy blush to the rest of the skin, I'm using that E00 again. And I'm trying to remember periodically to color his neck area to underneath the mask. Now I'm re-emphasizing the darkest shadows with the E13 here, especially under his bangs and along the sides where his part would um, be a little bit darker. And then I'm trying to go back in and blend again. And now for his hair, I thought I'd give him kind of an ashy brunette coloring. So it's a color combination that I've never used before, but that's part of the fun of Copic coloring. You can just kind of look at your stash of marker colors and see which ones would go together. So I did an E81 for the lightest highlights. Then for the darker areas, I'm using an E87 and an E79. That 79 is super dark, like an espresso color. And I'm trying to now connect the lightest areas with the mid-tones by flicking out toward those highlighted, the high ends of the bumps on his, you know, the shape of his head. That's really the easiest way I can describe, I think, how I go about coloring in hair. I'm flicking so to um, kind of create that hair texture. And you can see it turns out pretty well so that it looks like there's more texture and hair than there really is number of marks or flicks. And I go back in and reemphasize with the darkest, that E79, where the part is. And I decided I was going to add even a little bit more detail and texture with this Prisma color pencil. If you're interested in any of the colors that I'm using, please check out my blog post, which I will also link to in the description box below. And Sorry, it was a little blurry there for a second, but I think that the color pencil, the control you get from that because the ink from like a marker seeps a little bit into the paper, but color pencil lays right on top. So I got a lot of good texture that I really liked. For his doctor's coat, I'm using a C00 for the base color putting in shadows with a C2 and a C1. And I'm just trying to figure out where I should put these shadow marks kind of on the edges of the lab coat, where the two front panels combine together, where the there would be a shadow on the underside of his arms and where kind of the armpits would be. And then I'm going back in and blending out with the C1. So I laid in that darkest shadow and that's the completed image. Um, I think when the ink dries, it blends much nicer. Now I'm just using some scraps from my scrap box. This is a really pretty wood patterned paper that has some polka dots on it. I thought that was fun. I'm actually following a sketch challenge pattern from MFT Stamps um, and I really like how they kind of, if you're stuck for an idea of what to design, these 
challenges are really great, not only for color selection, which this is also the blue and the red and orange of the tie um, are also from uh, MFT color challenge. And then I decided to double up on this uh, kind of swoop of the area where the doctor is going to be standing. And I'm giving a little red orange trim here, which I think will pick up the color of his necktie nicely. And I'm just going to glue this on. I've got a couple of layers of cardstock there for that swoop ground. So for the doctor, I'm going to use some really thin Stampin' Up! Dimensionals that says double-sided foam adhesive. And I'm only putting it on his head, his arm, and torso because his legs will be on that kind of tripled up swoop of ground. And I've put him off toward the right of this banner that I hand cut out. And this banner on the back side of it, because I wanted it fully supported, I'm using some fun foam. That's a really inexpensive way to add some dimension without using a whole bunch of double-sided tape. And I'm just using some wet glue there and I'm gonna smear it down just a little bit. And it it is fantastic to add dimension without using up a whole bunch of foam adhesive. And I think that adds nice dimension. Um, and then for the little blank wood space next to the doctor, I'm just handwriting in with a Uniball Signo white gel pen, doctor equals hero. And the sentiment inside said, thanks a million, billion, trillion, skillion. <laughs> and that's a stamp from the Newton's Nook thankful thoughts stamp set. And that is the completed card. Really quick and easy, inspired by a couple of MFT challenges. And I love these little medical digis for these thank you cards for our medical heroes. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this process video, please give it a thumbs up. And I hope you guys are having a wonderful, safe weekend.